The Nugent Archive was deposited with Liverpool Hope in 2013 by the registered charity Nugent, formerly Nugent Care, the origins of which date back to the pioneering work of Father James Nugent, 1822-1905, in relation to child welfare, relief from poverty and social reform. The institutional records relating to the children's homes affiliated with the Archdiocese of Liverpool are held by Liverpool's Central Libraries Archive, but it was felt that the personal correspondence and the more ephemeral items would be better placed at Liverpool Hope University to support education in the history of child welfare in Liverpool. This presentation aims to introduce you to the founding days of Nugent Care and to paint a picture of what life was like in mid-19th century Liverpool using images from the archive. James Nugent was born on the 3rd of March 1822 to John and Mary Nugent of Hunter Street, Liverpool. His father had hopes that he would become a merchant but his mother, a recent convert to Catholicism, encouraged him to enter the priesthood. He was educated at a private school under the patronage of Reverend James Picton of Christchurch and in 1838 attended the College of St Cuthbert in Ushaw and the English College in Rome, studying for eight years. In 1846 he returned to Liverpool and was ordained at St Nicholas's on Copperas Hill, uh, the site of the old uh, Royal Mail Sorting Office. Father Nugent worked in parishes in Blackburn and Wigan until he was made curate at St Nicholas's in 1849. Towards the end of his life, he was blessed with the title of Monsignor by Pope Leo XIII on the 12th of June 1892 in Rome. In the mid 19th century, Liverpool was reeling from the effects of the Irish famine and the typhus epidemic that followed. During the summer of 1849, 5,000 would die from cholera the influx of Irish immigrants put a huge strain on Liverpool's already acute housing shortage. Many were simply passing through on their way to the New World, but a large minority were too poor or too sick to go any further. In 1841, the population of Liverpool was almost 300,000. By 1851, this had risen to 376,000. It is estimated that the Irish immigrants and their children accounted for 24% of the total population. Father Nugent could not help being aware of the vast numbers of homeless, destitute children roaming the streets, begging and stealing in order to exist, and sleeping in boxes and under bridges at night. As curate of St Nicholas's, Nugent first established a refuge for homeless children, offering shelter, food and clothing, and later set up a night shelter and refuge in Soho Street, for which there was huge demand. It said that 1867, 48,000 boys received an evening meal and 3,000 had a night's lodging there, an average of eight nights sleeping and 131 having something to eat. Nugent said, if a destitute boy is left to take his chance upon the streets, in a few years he will be a man without principle, without morality, and as he has no honest way to get his living, he will prey on society and maintain himself by dishonesty. We may strive in vain afterwards to reform him in jail. Father Nugent came to realise that a night shelter was not enough. What was needed was a residential school where the boys could learn to read and write and be taught a trade and prepared for adult life. By 1869, Father Nugent acquired larger premises on St Anne Street, the Boys' Refuge, a certified industrial school teaching shoemaking, tailoring, joinery and printing in order that the boys may be taught a trade. They were responsible for printing paper bags for businesses, publicity posters and Father Nugent's rescue notes. Between its opening in 1865 and its closure five years later, 2,000 boys learned a trade here. In 1854, Father Nugent arranged a meeting of leading citizens and churchmen in Liverpool Town Hall. His rallying cry was, Save the boy! His concern was the plight of the thousands of homeless children who survived in scholar only by begging or stealing. His first slogan had been, Wanted, million pennies to save the boy which appeared in the Catholic Times in 1866. In a lecture on poverty and neglect of children, Father Nugent coined the phrase, nobody's children, homeless children without a heart to love them 
or a hand to guide them. They would roam through the crowded thoroughfares and along the five miles of docks. Father Nugent's slogan became, Save the Child. Father Nugent continued to organise soirees and festivals, inspections of the boys' refuge with special events, aimed at raising much-needed funds for the upkeep of the home's running costs. In 1864, Father Nugent was appointed the first Catholic chaplain to Walton Jail, Hornby Road, and served for 22 years, resigning in 1885. It was through his experience as prison chaplain that Father Nugent would come to understand the real nature of the criminal poor, which prompted him to deal with crime in its infancy. He said, There is no more practical school to study mankind than within the walls of a prison. He also became concerned with the fate of women released from prison, as seen in his report in the archive entitled Incorrigible Women. In 1891, he opened St Saviour's Refuge for Fallen Women in Paul Street, in the care of the poor servants of the Mother of God, and established a home for mothers and their babies named the House of Providence in the Dingle in 1897. Rescue Notes was published quarterly by Father Nugent and printed at the Boys' Refuge. Nugent was keen to provide educational opportunities and was responsible for inviting the Sisters of Notre Dame de Namur to Liverpool in 1851 to work in the orphanages and to take charge of several Catholic poor law schools to provide the children with a basic standard of education. Later, the Ladies Boarding and Middle School at Mount Pleasant became the training college for Catholic school mistresses founded by Sister Frances Mary Lesher. This became known as Mount Pleasant Training College and is a founding college of Liverpool Hope University. Nugent was also instrumental in setting up the Catholic Institute at 26 Hope Street in 1853 and was appointed director until 1863. This eventually became part of St Edward's College, now located in West Derby. At that time, only 5% of Catholic children in Liverpool were receiving an education. Father Nugent did not work alone in helping the destitute children of Liverpool. In 1856, the St Vincent de Paul Society leased 105 Shaw Street for the establishment of St Vincent's Working Boys Home and Night Shelter for Homeless Boys. And Father John Berry leased 1 Marble Street, Williamson Square, as St Philip's House for Street Trading Boys, where it was calculated some 1,100 boys roamed the streets of Liverpool. At this time, Father Berry also established the Homes for Friendless Boys, which later changed its name to Homes for Catholic Friendless Youths, but simply referred to as Father Berry's Homes. Here you can see some very evocative photographs published in the reports of Father Berry's Homes of children taken before and after admission, designed, I think, to evoke pity from the readers and encourage donations. In 1893, Bishop Bernard O'Reilly assumed control of St Vincent's Boys' Homes and put Father Berry in charge. Arthur Chilton Thomas, a barrister and a devout Catholic, also took over the management of several Catholic boys' homes with Father Berry. Bishop O'Reilly died in 1894 and was succeeded by Bishop Thomas Whiteside, who set up a committee for the poor law schools under the supervision of Father Pennington. In 1881, the Liverpool Catholic Children's Protection Society was founded, jointly by Bishop O'Reilly and Father Nugent. This later became Nugent Care. More often than not, the homes that grew up in Liverpool were affiliated to this society. At the peak of their activities, the Liverpool Catholic Children's Protection Society could look after around 550 children. There's much more in the archive that I've not touched upon. For example, we have reports of the Catholic Reformatory Association from 1864 to 1885. The Catholic Reformatory Association was set up following the Reformatory Schools Act, 1854, to authorise financial help to institutions that would accept children convicted of crime. The association established a reformatory on a ship called the Clarence, capable of housing up to 250 boys. The success was quite remarkable for a time, until in 1884 a few boys set fire to her. It was a refurbished, but the same happened again in 1899, and the scheme abandoned. 
You can read more about the Clarence incident at the old Mersey Times web address provided. On leaving the Clarence after three years, many of the boys were taken into the Merchant Navy. There are letters written by some of the boys from the Clarence published in the reports. Father Nugent was an early pioneer of children's emigration. In 1870, he took the first group of 24 children to Canada on 18th of August, 1870, on the SS Austrian. This was probably the first organised emigration of its kind. Father Nugent used the opportunity to spend nine months on a lecture tour of Canada and the United States, encouraged by Archbishop Island, pleading the cause of these children and raising money. This was a task at which he excelled and his lecture notes can be found in the archive. The Catholic Children's Protection Society carried on the work, as quoted by Father Nugent, of rescuing orphan and abandoned children and of placing them in comfortable homes in Canada where they would have the opportunity of becoming useful and respectable members of the community. In 1881, they set up two homes in Canada to cater for children who wished to emigrate. These were the St George's Home for Boys in Ottawa and the St Vincent's Home for Girls in Montreal. Mrs Lacey, matron of the Society's home in Shaw Street, Liverpool, accompanied the children and spent a considerable amount of time visiting those previously sent out. During 1885 she reported that she had personally visited 140 children at their new homes and in 120 cases the results were entirely satisfactory. She concluded that it was only to be expected that some of the children should not realise to the full the hopes of their benefactors. Some were looked upon simply as a source of cheap labour. Others were adopted by their new families and were brought up and educated as their own children. Father Nugent had a vision of happy, healthy children prospering in a land of opportunity. Others saw it as a scheme to rid the city of those who would otherwise become a burden on the rates. Annual reports of the Liverpool Catholic Children's Protection Society later included copies of letters sent by some of the emigrants to the home in Shaw Street. Most expressed contentment or at least resignation to their new life. But there is a constant theme of loneliness running through them. Although the children are described as orphaned or abandoned, most seem to have had some relatives in Liverpool and there are constant requests for information about them. Here you can see one uh, where she's put, Dear sister, will you please try and get my mother's address? If there is any little girl got a brother in St George's school, will you tell them to ask my little brother his mother's address? Tell him that I am well and a big girl now. Assisting children to emigrate to the new world continued until the 1930s. A serious fall on deck during a return journey from New York in 1903 preceded a decline in health for Father Nugent and he died on the 27th of June 1905 in Formby. 10,000 mourners gathered for his funeral procession to Ford Cemetery on the 30th of June. A life-size bronze statue to the late Monsignor Nugent was erected by public subscription in St John's Gardens on December the 8th, 1906. The inscription reads, Save the boy, an eye to the blind, a foot to the lame, the father of the poor. Also, a commemorative special edition of Rescue Notes was published for Christmas that same year. In 1924, the three separate organisations, the Liverpool Catholic Children's Protection Society, the Catholic Children's Aid Society and Father Berry's Homes joined together as one under the guidance of the Archbishop of Liverpool, Frederick William Keating. He appointed Father John Oswald Bennett, 1891 to 1965, as administrator. Father Bennett was the administrator for over 40 years, continuing the pioneering efforts of Father Nugent in the field of Catholic social welfare. He would also become the biographer of Monsignor James Nugent in 1949 when he wrote the book Father Nugent of Liverpool. Father Bennett may not have the same renown in Liverpool as Father Nugent, but he was an important character in the development of social welfare and his influence and expertise often extended beyond Liverpool. 
The Nugent Archive naturally falls into two halves. Firstly, and the main focus of this presentation, the correspondence of Father Nugent written during his time as chaplain of Walton Jail and as co-founder of the Liverpool Catholic Children's Protection Society. And secondly, and by far the largest part of the archive, the letters of Father Bennett covering subjects such as child welfare, juvenile delinquency, child psychology and the end of child emigration to Canada in the 20th century. The archive contains some 26 books and 272 items in total, including the addition of any academic research undertaken using the archive. If you would like to access any of the material in the Nugent Archive, please email specialcollections at hope.ac.uk to make an appointment. Thank you.